क्वेश्चन थर्टी वन माइनस ट्वेंटी फाइव इंटू सेवन प्लस थ्री इज नॉट द सेम एस लेट इज फाइंड द वैल्यू ऑफ द गिवन एक्सप्रेशन माइनस ट्वेंटी फाइव इंटू सेवन प्लस थ्री इज इक्वल टू माइनस ट्वेंटी फाइव इंटू टेन माइनस टू फिफ्टी कम टू द ऑप्शन माइनस ट्वेंटी फाइव इंटू सेवन प्लस माइनस ट्वेंटी फाइव इंटू थ्री सो अकॉर्डिंग टू डिस्ट्रीब्यूटिव प्रॉपर्टी ए इंटू बी प्लस ए इंटू सी इज इक्वल टू ए इंटू बी प्लस सी हियर द कॉमन फैक्टर इज ए विच इज इक्वल टू माइनस ट्वेंटी फाइव इज द कॉमन फैक्टर इंटू सेवन प्लस थ्री इज इक्वल टू माइनस टू फिफ्टी एंड द सेकेंड ऑप्शन माइनस ट्वेंटी फाइव इंटू टेन विच इज इक्वल टू माइनस टू फिफ्टी एंड कम टू द थर्ड ऑप्शन माइनस टू फिफ्टी विच इज राइट विच इज इक्वल टू द गिवन एक्सप्रेशन एंड लास्ट द फोर्थ आंसर वॉट इज दैट माइनस ट्वेंटी फाइव इंटू सेवन इंटू थ्री माइनस ट्वेंटी फाइव इंटू सेवन इंटू थ्री विच इज माइनस फाइव ट्वेंटी फाइव राइट दे फोर ऑप्शन डी इज नॉट सेम एज द गिवन एक्सप्रेशन क्वेश्चन थर्टी टू इन रोमन न्यूमरल्स विच ऑफ द नंबर इज नॉट करेक्ट सो इन रोमन नंबर सिस्टम यल इज फिफ्टी एक्स इज टेन आई इज वन वेर एस सी इज हंड्रेड and v is equal to 5 come to the options l x i i i l is 50 x is 10 i is 1 1 1 which is 63 option b x c i i so here x c is 90 so c is 100 here x is 10 so we can only subtract the closest number on the left so here closest number on the left means x closest number is x that is 10 so this x cannot be less than 1/10th of the given number that means 1/10th of 100 is equal to 10 so this closest number that is x cannot be less than 1/10th of the given number therefore it must be at least 1/10th of the given number therefore xc is 90 so 1/10th of the given number is x and c is the given number so c 100 minus 10 is 90 so in the roman numerals 90 is written as xc plus i is 1 plus i is 1 which is equal to 92 option c is lc lc so apply the same rule c is 100 l is 50 which is equal to 50 but for 50 we have the symbol l so no need no need to write lc for 50 it is only l therefore option c is the answer so which is not correct check with the uh, option d also x l i v x option d x l i v x is 10 l is 50 so l x x l is 40 plus i v so less number greater number i v is 4 which is 44 right therefore option c is the right answer question 33 which of the following statements is not true 
HCF and LCM of two numbers X and Y are 15 and 120 respectively. HCF and LCM of two numbers X and Y are 20 and 250 respectively. LCM and HCF of two numbers X and Y are 70 and 14 respectively. LCM and HCF of two numbers X and Y are 290 and 58 respectively. So here, let us consider two numbers X and Y. Okay, HCF of two numbers, HCF of any two numbers is always a factor of their LCM, is always a factor of their LCM. Okay. Let us consider, for example, x l 12 and y as 15. HCF of 12 and 15 is 3, highest common factor. Lowest common multiplier is 60. Yeah, 15 into 4 is 60. 12 into 5 is 60. Okay. So, HCF of any two numbers, 3 is always a factor of their LCM. Yes, 3 is a factor of LCM that is 60. 3 into 20 is 60. Right. So, check with the answers. H option A. HCF and LCM of two numbers X and Y are 15 and 120 respectively. Here, HCF is 15, 120 is LCM. So, 15 is a factor of LCM, which is correct, right? Check second option, HCF and LCM of two numbers, X and Y, are 20 and 250 respectively. Here, 20 is not a factor of 250, which is not completely, 250 is not completely divisible by 20, right? Therefore, Option B is not true. Hence, it is correct answer. Check with other two options. LCM and HCF of two factors. X and Y are 70 and 14. Here, LCM is 70. HCF is 14. Yes, 14 into 5. Therefore, this is correct. That means the statement is true. LCM and HC, HCF of two numbers X and Y are 290 and 58. So, 58, 290 is completely divisible by 58. That is 58 into 5, 290. Therefore, the statement is true. Only the statement B is not true. Hence, option B. Question 34. On dividing 2 integer 1 by 3 by 2 by 5, the result is 2 integer 1 by 3 divided by 2 by 5 is equal to 7 by 3 divided by 2 by 5, which is 7 by 3 into 5 by 2. So, 35 by 6. Hence, option D. Question 35. If A, B and C are digits, then 3AB plus AB1 is equal to C18. Then the value of C is here. 3AB, a three-digit number. AB1, also three-digit number. C18, the answer. Here, B plus 1 is equal to 8. Therefore, B is equal to 7. Right? 1. Whereas, A plus B is 1. A plus B is equal to 1. But B is equal to 7. So, 7 plus A cannot be 1. So, it can be 11. Therefore, A 
is equal to 4. So that B plus A becomes 7 plus 4 is equal to 11. Right? So we can borrow our tens here. Right? Therefore, 3 plus 1, 4 already. Yeah. 3 plus 1 plus A is equal to C. What is A here? 4 plus A is 4 is equal to C. Therefore, C is equal to 8. Whereas A is equal to 4. Okay. Write the values here. 3, A is 4. B is 7, 347. Plus A is 4. B is 7. 471 is equal to 818. Right? Therefore, value of C is 8. Option C. Question 36. The annual income of Naresh is 576,000 rupees. His annual savings is 72,000. The ratio of his annual savings to his expenditure is here income income is 5,76,000 rupees. Savings is equal to 72,000. Therefore, expenditure expenditure is equal to income minus savings income minus savings therefore 576000 minus 72000 which is equal to 504000 rupees Therefore, the ratio of his annual savings to his expenditure. Therefore, therefore, savings by expenditure is equal to 72,000 by 4,000 is equal to 72 by 504 which is 1 by 7 and the ratio is 1 is to 7. Therefore, option C is the right answer. Question 37. If 3x plus 5 is equal to 0, then the value of x square minus 3x is equal to so, 3x plus 5 is equal to 0. Let us find the value of x. 3x is equal to minus 5. So, x is equal to minus 5 by 3. Therefore, x square minus 3x. x square minus 3x is equal to minus 5 by 3 whole square minus 3 into minus 5 by 3, which is? 25 by 9 minus, minus of minus is plus, which is 5, is equal to 25. So, 9 is the LCM. 25 plus 45 by 9, which is 70 by 9. So, check with the answer. So, you can express in terms of mixed fraction, that is, 7 integer, 7 by 9. 7 integer, 7 by 9. Yes, option A is the right answer. Question 38. The coefficient of x square in the sum of the expression minus 3x cube y square plus 2x square y cube and minus 3x square y cube minus 5y to the power of 4 is. So, let us add these two expressions. Minus 
3 x cube y square plus 2 x square y cube plus minus 3 x square y cube minus 5 y to the power of 4 is equal to minus 3 x cube y square plus 2 x square y cube minus of plus is minus 3 x square y cube minus 5 y to the power of 4 which is equal to minus 3 x cube y square will be as it is. So plus 2 minus 3 it is minus x square y cube minus 5 y to the power of 4. So here in the sum of these two expressions coefficient of x square that is x square is in the second term. So its coefficient is minus y cube. Therefore, it is minus y cube. Hence, option B is the right answer. Question 39. On dividing x cube minus 5x square minus 24x into 4x square minus 9y square by x into x minus 8 into 2x minus 3y, the result is here. Let us write the given expression. First one x cube minus 5x square minus 24x. So let us factorize the given expression as by taking x as common x square minus 5x minus 24. So x into. So let us factorize the expression x square minus 5x minus 24 by splitting the middle, middle term. That is x square minus 5x can be written as minus 8x plus 3x. So that minus 8 into 3 becomes minus 24. Right? Therefore, which is equal to x into here x is common in the first term x into x minus 8 plus 3 is common here. 3 into x minus 8. Therefore, x into x minus 8 into x plus 3. Consider this as 1. Second expression. 4x square minus 9y square. 4x square minus 9y square, which can be written as 2x whole square minus 3y whole square, which is equal to a square minus b square is equal to a square minus b square equals to a plus b into a minus b, right? a minus b. So, 2x whole square minus 3y whole square is 2x plus 3y into 2x minus 3y. Right? So, consider this as 2. Therefore, so the given expression divided by x into x minus 8 into 2x minus 3y. So, this given expression is x into x minus 8 into x plus 3 are the factors of expression 1 x cube minus y x square minus 24x into 4x square minus 9y square is, what are the factors? 2x plus 3y into 2x minus 3y. 2x plus 3y into 2x minus 3y whole divided by x into x minus 8 into 2x minus 3y. x into x minus 8 into 2x minus 3y which is equal to so x x will get cancelled x minus 8 x minus 8 will get cancelled 2x minus 3y 2x minus 3y will get cancelled therefore x plus 3 into 2x plus 3y is the answer x plus 3 into 2x plus 3y hence option a is the right answer Question 40. 
if p is equal to 3x square plus y square, q is equal to 2x square plus 3y square, and r is equal to 4x to the power of 4 plus 5y to the power of 4, then p into q minus r is equal to. So, p is equal to 3x square plus y square, q is equal to 2x square plus 3y square, and r is equal to 4x to the power of 4 plus y to the power of 4 plus y to the power of 5 y to the power of 4. Then p into q minus r is. So according to board mass rule, board mass, so brackets of division, multiplication, addition and after subtraction. So let us apply the this rule here p into q so the multiplication first comes after that subtraction so p into q is equal to first part p into q is equal to so what is p here 3x square plus y square into 2x square plus 3y square is equal to so 6x to the power of 4 plus 3 into 3 9x square y square plus 2x square y square plus 3y to the power of 4 which is 6x to the power of 4 plus 11x square y square plus 3y to the power of 4 now Second part, P into Q minus R is equal to 6x to the power of 4 plus 11x square y square plus 3y to the power of 4 minus R is 4x to the power of 4 plus 5y to the power of 4. 4x to the power of 4 plus y to the power, 5y to the power of 4 is 6x to the power of 4 plus 11x square y square plus 3y to the power of 4 minus 4x to the power of 4 minus y to the power 5y to the power of 4. So 6 minus 4, 2x to the power of 4 plus 11x square y square. So plus 3 minus 5 minus 2y to the power of 4. Therefore, 2x to the power of 4 plus 11x square y square minus 2y to the power of 4. Option A is the right answer. Question 41. Which of the following figures has a linear symmetry but no rotational symmetry? So, parallelogram, kite, rectangle, rhombus. So consider a parallelogram, parallelogram, let us draw a parallelogram, right. So when an imaginary line passes through the middle region of the shape, the parallelogram, if it divides the shape into two identical parts, that means part one and part two, if it divides the shape into two identical parts, then the shape has line of symmetry. But in case of parallelogram, there is no line of symmetry. There is no line of symmetry. That means the line, this line, does not divide the shape into two identical part. Part one is not identical to part two. So parallelogram has no line of symmetry. What about rotational symmetry? When But when the shape is rotated through 360 degree, when the shape is rotated through 360 degree, so this object or shape will appear to be same. So how many times it will be that means the shape will appear to be same. So that time, that number is called order of symmetry. 
order of symmetry. So, in case of rotational symmetry, order of symmetry is nothing but the number. It is number used to describe how many times the object will appear to be same while rotating through 360 degree. Here, in case of parallelogram, parallelogram appear to be same two times when it is rotating through 360 degree. Hence, order of symmetry in case of parallelogram is 2. So, parallelogram has no line of symmetry and it has rotational symmetry of order 2. Come to the case of kite. Roughly, kite, it has only one line of symmetry. So, this line, imaginary line, when it passes through middle region, so it divides the kite into two identical parts, part one and part two. It has only one line of symmetry. But no rotational symmetry, not rotational symmetry. That means this object or shape will not appear to be same when it is rotated through 360 degree. But not rotational symmetry. So you can check with other shapes, rectangle and rhombus. Option C, rectangle. 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 So it has line of symmetry. Rectangle has line of symmetry, but not one. It has two lines of symmetry. That means one vertical line. So it divides the shape into identical parts. Left and right are same. And the horizontal line of symmetry. So upper part is same as the below part. Therefore, rectangle has two lines of symmetry. Two lines of symmetry. What about the rotational symmetry? So it has rotational symmetry of order 2. Rotational symmetry, symmetry of order 2. That means number of times when it is rotated through 360 degree. So that will appear to be same. The shape will appear to be same is 2 times. Hence, order of symmetry of a rectangle is 2. And the last one is rhombus. So, in case of rhombus, consider rhombus. Consider rhombus. It also has two lines of symmetry. So, first part is similar to second part. And the third part below the horizontal line is similar to the fourth part that is above the horizontal line. So it also has, rhombus also has two lines of symmetry. Two lines of symmetry. What about the rotational? It also has rotational symmetry. Rotational symmetry of order two. Of order two. Therefore, in the above question, the correct answer is Kite. So, this kite figure has linear symmetry but not a rotational symmetry. Question 42. Three angles of a triangle are in the ratio 3 is to 5 is to 4 and the greatest angle is x. Then the value of 4x plus 9 degree is. So, three angle, tr angles in a triangle are in the ratio 3 is to 5 is to 4. Therefore, and the greatest angle, greatest angle is x, x degrees. So, here 3y plus 5y plus 4y is equal to 180 degree, which is 12y is 180. 
therefore y is equal to 180 by 12 which is 15 y is 15 and the three angles are so angle 1 is equal to 3y which is 45 degrees angle 2 is 5y which is 75 degrees and angle 3 is equal to 4y which is 60 degree therefore the greatest angle greatest angle x is 75 degrees so the given expression so what is the given expression 4x plus 9 degrees therefore 4x plus 9 is equal to 4 into 75 plus 9 which is 309 309 hence option b is the right answer Question 43. The sum of the supplement and complement of an angle x is to 40 degree. Then the value of 3x minus 20 is. So, supplementary angle. Supplementary angle of x is 180 minus x. Right. Two angles are said to be supplementary angles when their sum is 180 degree. Complementary angle angle of x is 90 minus x. Right? Their sum their sum is 180 minus x plus 90 minus x which is 270 minus 2x which is equal to 240. It is given. So sum of the supplement and complement of an angle x is 240 degree which is given. Therefore 2x is equal to 270 minus 240 which is 30 degrees. Therefore x is 15. Therefore the given expression 3x minus 20. So, 3x minus 20 is 3 into 15 minus 20, which is 45 minus 20, 25. Therefore, the answer is option C. Question 44. If F, V and E are respectively the number of faces, vertices and edges of a hexagonal pyramid, then which of the following statements is true? 2F plus V minus E is equal to 8. 2F plus V minus E is equal to 9. 2F plus 2V minus E is equal to 15. 3F plus 2V minus 2E is equal to 10. Consider a hexagonal pyramid where number of faces F Number of faces F is equal to 7. That means two, uh, 6 triangular faces and 1 hexagonal face. Right? Number of vertices. Number of vertices V is equal to 7. That means vertices at the corner of hexagonal shape and 1 at the top. 6 plus 1 again. 6 plus 1 that is 7 vertices. Number of edges. Number of edges. E is equal to 12. There are 12 number of edges in a hexagonal pyramid. So in case of a hexagonal pyramid, F plus V, number of faces, plus vertices is equal to number of edges plus 2, E plus 2. So come to the options A, 2F plus V minus E. 2F plus V minus 
E is equal to. What is F here? Number of faces? 7. V is 7. E is 12. So 2 into 7 plus V is also 7 minus E is 12. That is 14 plus 7 minus 12 which is 21 minus 12 is equal to 9 which is not the given RHS that is 8. So option A is not correct. Come to option B. 2F plus V minus E is equal to 9. So in the first case only we have derived which is equal to 9. Hence option B is right. LHS is equal to RHS. Hence option B is the correct answer. Question 45. The lengths of the two diagonals of a rectangle ABCD are 6x plus 3 and 4x plus 7. Then the value of 6x plus 3 plus 4x plus 7 is. Let us draw a rectangle. Rectangle whose length is L, breadth is B. Draw the diagonals. So, in a rectangle, diagonals are equal in their length. Therefore, so in ABCD rectangle, diagonal AC is equal to BD, which is equal to square root of L square plus B square. According to Pythagoras theorem, since here in triangle ABC, Angle B is 90 degree. Therefore, diagonal AC is equal to square root of length square plus breadth square. Right. So, diagonals are equal and they are 6x plus 3 and 4x plus 7. Therefore, 6x plus 3 is equal to 4x plus 7. Simplify it. 6x minus 4x is equal to 7 minus 3. Therefore, 2x is 4. Therefore, x is equal to x is equal to 2. Right. Then the value of 6x plus 3. Therefore, ac is equal to 6x plus 3, which is 6 into 2 plus 3, which is 15. Whereas bd is another diagonal. 4x plus 7, BD is 4x plus 7, which is 4 into x is 2 plus 7, 8 plus 7 is 15. AC and BD are same. Therefore, their sum is, therefore, AC plus BD is equal to 15 plus 15, which is 30. Therefore, the option C is the right answer. Question 46. Sides of a triangle are of length 12 cm, 13 cm and 5 cm. Then altitude corresponding to the longest side of the triangle is. Here, consider a triangle. Consider a triangle whose longest side is 13 centimeter. Let 13 centimeter be the base of the triangle, 12 centimeter and 5 centimeter. So altitude corresponding to the longest side. So this altitude H we need to calculate. So let sides of the triangle, triangle be a is equal to 12 centimeter. B is equal to 13 centimeter. And C is equal to 5 centimeter. Right. So, by Heron's formula, Heron's formula, area of the triangle is equal to square root of square root of S into S minus A into S minus B into S minus C, which is, what is S here? S is equal to A plus B plus C, side plus side plus side divided by 2, which is 
12 plus 13 plus 5 by 2, which is 30 by 2, which is equal to 15. Therefore, area is equal to square root of S is 15. So, S minus A is 15 minus the value of A is 12. 12 into 15 minus 13 into 15 minus 5. Right? Therefore, it is square root of 15 into 3 into 2 into 10. It is 15 into 3. 45, 45 into 2, 90, 92 into 10, 900, it's square root. Therefore, area A is equal to 30 centimeter square. 30 centimeter square. But area of a triangle A is equal to half into base into height. Therefore, half BH is equal to 30 centimeter square half base that means longest side corresponding to the longest side of the triangle we have to calculate here that therefore we will take 13 as base of the triangle into height is equal to 30 therefore height is equal to 30 into 2 by 13 that is 60 by 13. Therefore, altitude corresponding to the longest side of the triangle is 60 by 13. We can simplify it. 4 integer 8 by 13. Therefore, option A is the right answer. Question 47. The perimeter of a trapezium ABCD is 90 centimeter and the length of each of its non-parallel sides AD and BC is 17 centimeter. If area of the trapezium is 420 centimeter square, then distance between the two parallel sides of the trapezium is. Consider a trapezium ABCD. A, B, C, D. Where A, D is equal to C, B. A, D is equal to C, B, B, C, which is 17 centimeter. And perimeter of the trapezium, P is equal to 90 centimeter. And its area is 420 centimeter square. We have to find the distance between two parallel sides of the trapezium. That is nothing but height of the trapezium, H. Right? Come to the calculation or the solution part. Here, <clears throat> perimeter of the trapezium, perimeter of the trapezium is equal to sum of its sides. That is, AB plus BC plus CD plus AD. Perimeter is given that is 90 centimeter is equal to AB plus BC is 17 centimeter plus CD plus AD is also 17 centimeter. Therefore, AB plus B CD AB plus CD is equal to 90 minus 17 plus 17, 34, which is 56. Therefore, AB plus CD is equal to 54, sorry, 56 centimeter. Now, area of the trapezium. Area of the trapezium A is equal to half into sum of the parallel sides. Sum of the parallel sides into its height. 
into its height. So area is already given that is 420 centimeter square. 420 is equal to half into sum of the parallel sides is nothing but AB plus CD which is already calculated. AB plus CD is 56 centimeter into height is H. Simplify it. 420 is equal to half into 56 which is 28 into height. Therefore, height or altitude is 420 divided by 28. Therefore, altitude of the given trapezium or the distance between two parallel sides is equal to 15 centimeter. 420 by 28 is 15 centimeter. Therefore, option C is the right answer. Question 48. The curved surface area of a right circular cylinder is one third of its total surface area. If radius of the cylinder is 8 cm, then volume of the cylinder in centimeter cube is here. Total surface area. Total surface area. of a cylinder, a right circular cylinder is equal to 2 pi r into r plus h. And curved surface area, curved surface area is equal to 2 pi r h, the formula. And volume of the cylinder Volume of the cylinder is equal to pi r square h. And the given is radius of the cylinder is 8 centimeter. Radius of the cylinder, cylinder r is equal to 8 centimeter. So solution. Given that the curved surface area of the circular cylinder is one third of its total surface area. So curved surface area is equal to one third of its total surface area. TSA. Total surface area. So the formula for curved surface is 2 pi rh. 2 pi r h is equal to 1 by 3 into total surface area is 2 pi r into r plus h. 2 pi r into r plus h. Right. Therefore, 2 pi r h is equal to 2 pi r by 3 into r plus h. Therefore, 3 into 2 pi r h divided by 2 pi r is equal to r plus h. Therefore, 2 pi r, 2 pi r will get cancelled. 3 h is equal to r plus h. Therefore, 2 h is equal to r. Therefore, h is r by 2. r is given which is 8 centimeter, 8 by 2. Therefore, height of the right circular cylinder is 4 cm. And we have to find volume of the cylinder in centimeter cube. So, given that volume of the cylinder, according to the formula, it is pi r square h. Volume of the cylinder. Volume of the cylinder is equal to pi r square h. So, pi into r is 8 square, height is 4, which is pi into 64 into 4, which is 256 pi. So, in the options, 
the answer is expressed in multiples of pi. Therefore, it is 256 pi. Option A. Question 49. If mean of the observations 25, 29, 25, 32, 24 and x is 27, then median of the observations is. Here, no need to write the observations in ascending or descending order because the value of x is unknown here. Let us find the value of x by using the formula mean of the observations. So here, mean is equal to sum of all observations divided by Number of total number of observations, right? Sum of all observations divided by total number of observations. Total number of observations. So, what does mean given here? 27 is equal to sum of all observations that is 25 plus 29 plus 25 plus 32 plus 24 plus x divided by total number of observations here 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. 6 is the total number of observations. Therefore, therefore, 27 into 6 is equal to, so sum of 25, 29, again 25 is equal to 135 plus x. So 27 into 6 is 162 is equal to 135 plus x. Therefore, x is equal to 162 minus 135 which is 27. The value of x is 27. Now let us arrange the observations, the numbers in ascending order. So by writing or by arranging in ascending order. Arranging in ascending order. So it becomes 24, 25, 25, 27, 29 and 32. Here n, the number of terms is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. n is equal to 6. So for even number of terms, for even number of terms, median is equal to Median is equal to n by tooth term, n by tooth term plus n by 2 plus 1th term, n by 2 plus 1th term divided by 2. Therefore, median is equal to here n is 6, 6 by tooth term. Plus 6 by 2 plus 1 is yeah, 6 by 2 plus 1 month term whole divided by 2 which is third term. What is 6 by 2 is 3. Third term is 25. 6 by 2 plus 1 is fourth term. That is 27. 25 plus 27 by 2 which is equal to 52 by 2, which is 26. Therefore, median is equal to 26. Come to the options. Option C is the right answer. Median of the observations is 26. Question 50. Numbers 10 to 60 are written on separate slips, one number on one slip. They are kept in a box and then they are mixed well. One slip is chosen from the box without looking into it. 
what is the probability that the number on the chosen slip is divisible by both 2 and 3? So here, total numbers from 10 to 60. So there are 51 numbers from 10 to 60. So total numbers from 10 to 60 is equal to 51, right? So the numbers which are divisible by 2 and 3 both are, so the total numbers from 10 to 60 which are divisible by divisible by both 2 and 3. 2 and 3 are twelve. 12 is divisible by 2 as well as 3 and 18 and 24 27 is not divisible by 2. So 30, 36, next is 42, 48, 54, 54 and 60. So these are the numbers which are divisible by both 2 and 3. So here total numbers which are divisible by both 2 and 3 are total numbers are 9. There are 9 numbers which are divisible by both 2 and 3 from 10 to 60. Therefore, probability probability that the number on the chosen slip is divisible by 2 and 3 both is equal to here what is the formula for probability, it is number of possible cases, number of possible cases or in other cases it is number of observable events divided by total number of events. So in this example it is number of possible cases divided by total number of cases. Total number of cases. So here total num numbers from 10 to 60 is 51. The number is 51 in that 9 cases that means 9 numbers are divisible by both 2 and 3. Right? Right? So among 51 numbers 9 numbers are divisible by both 2 and 3. Hence, probability is equal to 9 divided by 51. You can simplify it. 3 divided by 20, uh, 17. 3 divided by 17. Therefore, option B is the right answer. Question 51. Which of the following is not true for assessment? Assessment focuses on developing critical thinking and problem solving skills among students. Assessment helps students engage in the learning process. Assessment provides feedback to teacher to improve their pedagogy. Assessment is just a reflection of students marks in the report card. Here option D which is not true for assessment. So the true definition of assessment is that it provides effective feedback to the children about their learning and also provides an opportunity for the teacher to select appropriate learning strategies which would suit the children and their cognitive abilities. The assessment provides feedback to the teacher to improve their pedagogy so that the learning improvement in the students can be seen. On the other hand, assessment is not just a reflection of students' marks on the report card because 
this does not fill the objective of true learning and fulfilling the teaching learning process according to the capabilities of the children. Hence, option 4, D, is not true for assessment. Question 52. A mathematics teacher records classroom observation either during or after the session by writing short notes in a brief narrative style. It is an example of maintaining rubrics, anecdotal records, checklist, portfolio. The correct answer is anecdotal records. An anecdotal record is a detailed descriptive narrative record after a specific behavior or interaction occurs. Anecdotal records inform teachers as they plan learning experiences, provide information to families and give insights into identifying possible developmental delays. Hence option B. Question 53. A middle school mathematics teacher asks his students to construct a rectangle with length 7 cm and breadth 4 cm. As the students completed the task, he further instructs them. Increase the length and breadth by 2 cm each and draw to see what figure you get. Decrease the length and breadth by 2 cm and draw to see what figure you get. Increase the length by 1 cm and decrease the breadth by 1 cm. Can you predict the type of figure without drawing? Which principle of Zoltan Dean's theory of mathematics learning is he using in the above activity? Here, Zoltan Dean's is an Hungarian mathematician whose ideas on education, especially for small children, have been popular in some countries. He is a world famous theorist and tireless practitioner of the new mathematics. An approach to mathematics learning is that uses games, songs, and dance to make it more appealing to children. Here, in the above example, the teacher is using mathematical variability principle. What is mathematical variability principle? So it implies that children need to experience many variations of irrelevant attributes linked to the concept structure to single out the general mathematical concept which is constant to all manipulations. Whereas constructive principle, it suggests that reflective abstraction of physical and mental actions on concrete materials results in the formation of mathematical relations. Whereas perceptual variability principle here, which suggests that conceptual learning is maximized when children are exposed to a concept through a variety of physical contexts or embodiments. Whereas in dynamic principle, preliminary structured activities using concrete materials should be provided to give necessary experiences from which mathematical concepts will be grasped by the students. Here in the above example, teacher uses mathematical variability principle. Question 54. Ratios are closely related to fractions, but both have important distinctions. Which of the following is true with respect to the given statement? The ratio of boys to girls in the classroom is 3 by 5. This ratio is a fraction. B. The ratio of girls to total children in the classroom is 3 by 8. This is both a ratio and a fraction. Rimjim walked 3 by 4 of a kilometer. This is a fraction and not a ratio. Choose the correct option. Only B, A and C, B and C, A and B. Here option C. Both B and C statements are correct. Here, a ratio is a relationship in quantity or degree between Two things. We use the word ratio when you want to make a comparison between two things. A ratio ex expresses a proportion, whereas fractions represent equal parts of a whole or a collection. So when we divide a whole into equal parts, each part is a fraction of the whole. So in the second statement sentence, the ratio of girls 
to total children in the classroom is 3 by 8. This is both a ratio and a fraction because here the ratio of girls to total children in the class is given as 3 by 8. Right. This means that if the total number of girls in the class is divided by total number of children in the class, then the ratio becomes 3 is to 8. Then the ratio of 3, eight, three is to 8 will be formed. And also this is a fraction because if the total students in the class are taken as a whole, that means total number of students 8 is taken as a whole and only girls are selected from that, then the fraction of 3 by 8 is formed. Right. So out of eight, three are girls. Right. And in the third statement, Rimjim walked three by four of a kilometer. Rimjim, which means that if a kilometer is taken as a whole, in the Rimjim walked three parts out of four parts. Three out of four parts. And this is not a ratio because no comparison is being done here. So, therefore, option C, both statement B and C are correct. Question 55. A middle school mathematics teacher uses paper folding and dissection activities with her students for explorations in symmetries and geometric shapes. The students are able to observe geometrical properties of different shapes, verify properties without formal proofs, make connections between various shapes. According to Van Heer's theory of development in geometry, the students are reasoning at the level of option A, establishing relationships, recognition, Analysis, axiomatics. Here the correct answer is establishing relationships. So Van Hill's theory describes how young people learn geometry. It postulates five levels of geometric thinking which are labeled visualization, analysis, abstraction, formal deduction and rigor. Each level uses its own language and symbols. Students pass through the levels Step by step. Here level 0. Level 0 is visualization. Visualization. At this level, students use visual perception and non-verbal thinking. Visual perception and non-verbal thinking. Visual perception and non-verbal thinking. And second is level one. So level one is analysis. Level one is analysis. At this level, students start analyzing and naming properties of geometric figures. Analyzing and naming properties of geometric figures properties of geometric figures. So level 2, next is level 2, is abstraction or establishing relationships. Abstraction or establishing relationships. At this level, students perceive relationships between properties and figures. They create meaningful definitions, right? And the next level is deduction or axiomatics. Axiomatics. At this level, students can give deductive geometric proofs. They are able to differentiate between necessary and sufficient conditions. Level 4, the last level, it is rigor. So at this level, students understand the way how mathematical systems are established. They are able to use all types of proofs. Here for this question, the correct answer is establishing relationships. Question 56. Which of the following is an example of a question with multiple answers? 
ऑप्शन ए गिवन आर द फोर डिजिट्स नाइन थ्री सेवन फाइव मेक द लार्जेस्ट फोर डिजिट नंबर यूजिंग ऑल द गिवन डिजिट्स यूजिंग फोर डिफरेंट डिजिट्स विदउट रिपीटेशन मेक द लार्जेस्ट फोर डिजिट नंबर यूजिंग फोर डिफरेंट डिजिट्स मेक द लार्जेस्ट फोर डिजिट नंबर विथ अ कंडीशन दैट फाइव इज ऑलवेज अट यूनिट्स प्लेस Make one four-digit number using both the digits three and five equal number of times. Here, the correct answer is make one four-digit number using both the digits three and five equal number of times. Here, questions with multiple answers are open-ended questions that enhance the creativity and thinking capacity of children. When the questions having multiple answers are given, the thinking capacity of students can also be assessed, and the cognitive abilities of the students can be known by the teacher. Question fifty-seven: Which of the following statement is not true for the given mathematical concept? Option A: The concept of a rectangle includes both spatial and length relationships. B: Chance is the relationship between the frequency of an event happening compared with all possible outcomes. Option C: The concept of a negative integer is based only on the magnitude of the number. The concept of multiplication includes the concept of area of rectangle. Here. The concept of a negative integer is based only on the magnitude of the number is not true for the given mathematical concept. So the total value of the negative integer depends on two things. So total value of negative integer depends on two things. One is the magnitude, magnitude, and another is the negative sign. negative sign if the sign is removed the value of the number increases many number of times the, for example minus 2 if minus is removed it becomes plus 2 so it is number of times more than that of minus 2 plus 2 is number of times more than that of minus 2 so sign also plays an important role in the case of many negative integers so it would be better to say that the concept of a negative integer depends on the magnitude and the sign hence option c is not true for the given mathematical concept question 58 examinations and class tests add to mathematics anxiety in some students which of the following is true for mathematics anxiety according to the given statement here mathematics anxiety can be defined as the fear or uninterest of students to solve mathematics problems or studying mathematics mathematics anxiety would have developed in students due to many reasons like not developing the basic concepts of mathematics the teacher not encouraging the doubts asked by the students etc here in options a b c d mathematics anxiety can be addressed by making assessment an integral part of the daily mathematics instruction with the focus on the progress of the student which is the right answer so whereas students facing mathematics anxiety should be asked to take a greater number of tests to overcome the anxiety which is false students overcome mathematics anxiety by practicing a lot of questions before the examination is also not true false the stu students with mathematics anxiety should be exempted from giving examinations which is the wrong method here steps to address mathematics anxiety are regularly conducting diagnostic tests to identify the learning difficulties of students steps to address mathematics anxiety few steps are regularly conducting diagnostics tests
right after identifying the learning difficulties immediately acting upon and designing the remedial teaching for the students designing remedial teaching to avoid the fear of assessments in mathematics assessment can be made an integral part of daily mathematic instruction with a focus on the progress of the students which is given here right so hence option a is the right answer assessment should be avoided for only giving grades and marks purpose assessment should not only be restricted to conduct after exams it should be also done during the teaching learning process therefore option a is the correct answer Question 59. According to National Curriculum Framework NCF 2005, technology can greatly aid the process of mathematical exploration. Which of the following statement reflects a reason that restricts this exploration? Use of calculators hampers the acquisition of basic computational skills in students. Use of technology will make the teacher's role irrelevant in the classrooms. With the use of technology, problem-solving skills cannot be developed in students. It is expensive and hence the use of technology becomes luxurious in a country where vast majority of students cannot afford more than one notebook. Option D is the right answer here. Technology is one of the greatest learning resources for mathematics. Many mathematics topics can be clearly explained through visual exploration, which is not possible without technology. According to NCERT, Technology should be properly included in the teaching learning process to progress towards mathematical exploration. If technology is considered costly, no one would step forward to use the technology for mathematical exploration. A great learning experience and visualization will be missed if the technology is not considered important. So the government should ensure that proper technology and technology resources are available for students to learn mathematics in an explorative way. Hence, option D is the right answer. Question 60. Algebraic thinking involves generalization and symbolization. Which of the following explains the meaning of the given statement? Op A. Algebraic equations are solved by using mathematical symbols. Hence, these symbols should be memorized. Algebra involves the process of creating generalizations from arithmetic. Algebra involves representing patterns and regularities in our world. Algebra is more abstract and symbolic. Hence, cannot be taught through concrete experiences. Choose the correct option. Here, option A and D. B and D, A and C, B and C. So the statements B and C are correct here. Algebra is one of the broad areas of mathematics. Roughly speaking, algebra is the study of mathematical symbols and the rules for manipulating these symbols in formulas. It is a unifying thread of almost all the mathematics. So generalization in algebra means examining varying quantities and describing relationships that exist among cases for a particular situation. Algebra involves the process of creating generalizations from arithmetic. It involves representing patterns and regularities in our world. Hence, option D, that is statements B and C are correct. Question 